Judith, as a philosopher and as a theologian, uh, even though you're in the Anglophone world, you are very much appreciative and utilize phenomenology based on continental philosophy in your work. Uh, in that regard, what can phenomenology bring to an, un an understanding and appreciation of the, of the foundation or the essence of consciousness, mm. which oftentimes we see much more from an analytic philosophy point of view? I think the main, the fundamental thing that continental philosophy tries to do for us is not to abstract from the experience of any object or of any situation. We are much less interested in trying to isolate particular concepts or objects in order to describe them conceptually, and much more interested in keeping together the whole, the entirety, the totality of what, how objects are constituted for us, partly because our relation to them defines both the object and what we mean by knowing it. Um, and therefore, when it comes to consciousness, we are much less interested in trying to isolate the concept of consciousness, what this might be, and focus our main attention on how to capture that element of consciousness, which is most characteristic of it, namely that we can't bring it into view because it is always that through which we see. What then would be some examples of uh, phenomenology in, whether it's an experiment, a thought experiment or a real experiment, that could give some color hmm. to the nature of consciousness that analytic philosophy would not be as effective doing? Hmm. That's a good question. So if you take any object, how you construe that object, um, how you relate yourself to it, will depend so much on your own um, situation with regard to it and on your understanding of what kind of situation you're in. And so one of the experiments we run is how people relate to objects and especially to pairs of objects that might not be closely connected if they think that they are seeing ordinary things or if they think that they're seeing art. And what we find is that people who think that they are looking at art bring completely different um, resources of consciousness to what they're seeing than if they think that they're relating to objects. So, so that's very interesting and, and gives kind of a phenomenological approach to the nature of consciousness, a different kind of richness than analytic philosophy would do, which would um, be worried about the definition of every one of your words very, very carefully, which is needed as well. Of, of course. course, definitely. Um, so in, in your um, approach, uh, how then is phenomenology uh, a sort of a complement to analytic philosophy in studying human consciousness? Well, I do think that they are both necessary and that they complement each other well, because as you say, I think we need conceptual precision about certain things, but I also think that it is part of both the nature of experience and of the nature of language that we use the same word for different things or that one thing can mean different things. And to try to um, abstract away from that and create a conceptual division and categorization that will allow us to get a conceptual handle on things will often precisely obscure the nature of consciousness, part of which it is to see in the same word different things at the same time or to see the same phenomenon under different aspects. So I think that the precisely the attempt at conceptual clarification will often obscure that aspect of consciousness, which depends on metaphors, symbols, analogies, and ambivalences, ambiguities.